Welcome to Dyson Sphere Program. My name is Neil Lauz and this is a tutorial on the planetary geography and design. It sounds really boring, but it is actually super important to know and understand so that you know how best to expand to new planets because all the planets are the same. So why not have some kind of system on how to do it? I see a lot of questions on my YouTube and my Twitch that seem to indicate that a lot of people don't really understand the basic layout of how this is working. So in this tutorial, we're gonna go through the overall design and geography. We're gonna go through some of the terms that I use and hopefully other people will use as well. We're gonna talk about the most dominant feature that's called the fault lines. We're gonna talk about how to divide the a new planet so that you get an idea about how you build some structure instead of just suddenly finding that you're building at a very unfortunate location and then your entire build is awful. And then I'm gonna finish up with some good advice on what to build in which regions of the planet so that your planets become as effective as possible. Now there are many places to start, but I am gonna start with some one thing. Ha! I'm gonna start with one thing. And that one thing is, how is the planet divided as uh, sort of at the, at the very core of it? Because you have a square grid that's pressing B to enter construction button in, in construction mode. You um, you have a square grid projected on a sphere. That's never going to work. So at the poles, things are really weird. And at the center, things are really regular. The way that it works, and I absolutely love this way. There have been other suggestions and they, they would not have worked in the, as brilliant as way as the way that they've chosen to do it. The way it works is that at its core, they have squares. And as the squares go closer to the poles, they will gradually get smaller. At some point, they will define that these, these have become too small. You can see the squares here are bigger than the squares up here. And at some point, they'll decide to say, nope, at this point, we are simply, uh, that's too small. So we're going to start over the square grid with bigger squares again. These squares are now the same size as that one. And then, of course, there can be fewer squares all the way around than they could in the outer layer. But the general parameters are the same, that they go from bigger to smaller, or bigger to smaller. And the way that it is absolutely divided, every single planet is the same, they're all the same, and I don't hope that they're gonna be making different size planets. Actually, they have all but confirmed that they will not. Is that it goes one square, one, 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 one. Those are the closest to the poles. There are just one, well, and every, every square here of five tiles, they will be, uh, they will have a new new projection and then there's two squares then there's two squares then there's three then there's three and then there's five and there's five and then there's eight no sorry there's ten and this one and then there's sixteen and then we get to the equator and then it repeats on the other side so basically that means that everything is can be and should be considered divided into regions between these lines and that's where we get into into some of the nomenclature that I just want to start by just clarifying because it's important that we talk about the same thing. Now, I've already been using some of these uh, terms. Square is, in my world, these things. They consist of five by five tiles. You can see here, five tiles by five tiles. And a big square is the ones that are highlighted. So that's 10 by 10 tiles or two by two squares. So that's uh, what we have here. So we have in terms of squares, one, two, three, four squares. Then we have one, two squares, we have one, two, and then we have three, three, five, five, ten, and sixteen. That's a good way. So the one, what do we call other things, other very important things? And then we talk about it from a geological perspective. These lines that I have now gracefully highlighted with um, with these bands here, they are they are, they are the places where the lines between where the projection shifts. And you can call them whatever you like, but from my perspective, it looks when you start drawing belts across, they do a little shift across, uh, across it, like as if uh, the tectonic plates of this world has shifted and caused a fault line that um, that then uh, shifts everything. So I call it the fault line. You can call it whatever you want, uh, baseline, uh, shift line, whatever. But uh, I think it's very important that we have, we, we, you know what I'm talking about when I call a fault line. So that's a fault line for me, and. Uh, because it, it, it looks like it's the tectonic sh place to shift. So that's that's just the name I've, I've decided on. Uh, the other important thing is if we look at out here, I have highlighted with power poles, these lines, they are slightly bolder. They go all the way and they go unbroken 
all the way from the South Pole to the North Pole or from the North Pole to the South Pole. That's kind of the same thing. And they are called meridians. Well, and that is, yeah, that's the term. And uh, you could call these prime meridians. I know there's only technically one prime meridian, but that's uh, in this case, since they're bold and you don't really know which one is the prime, then I, I had tend to just call them prime meridians. But um, they are meridians. They are There are four of them. You can see here on the planet. Four, that divides the planet into eight eight quadrants, four quadrants on the north north side, north he, northern hemisphere, and eight, four on the southern hemisphere. But there is more interesting like that than that because if you look at the lines such as this one, you can see that even though it's not bolded all the way, this line actually goes also all the way down from north to south pole. And it turns out that there are 20 of these lines around the pole. So I always do this highlight with power poles here. And then you can see between each of the prime meridians for a quadrant, you can say I have one section, two section, three section, four sections, and five sections. That turns out that you actually have, if you look at from a top view here, then inside a region or a quadrant, then you have split even further into smaller segments, planetary segments. That's also what I just call them, or planetary sectors, these things. You could also call them city blocks, but that's kind of uh, a factorial term. And now we have actually the framework for how to talk about the planet. We can talk about the polar regions. We can talk about the regions within each, each of these bands. We know that this one is... This is three, this is three, this is five, this is five. So there are two that are five wide. They can be used for some things. There's one that's 10 wide. They can be used for something. And then there are two that are 16 wide. Those are the juicy spots for the main production facilities. Makes perfect sense, right? And now you also know that, well, are you going to build right there? Or are you going to build right there? The thing is, if you look at a location between that contains two sectors, like for example, uh, let's go fly actually here so this the space between that one to there to there and down here if we drag that here two planetary sectors on this square is actually can take 30 smelters along that path that's pretty damn convenient that you can take 30 smelters that means you can do like full full belts of smelters within two planetary segments that's pretty nice. That's a good thing. Let's come a bit back to the fault lines because they are incredibly important to keep track of and also deal with because you are going to have a very bad time if you start just land on a planet, don't know where you are and you just start taking a belt and you just start dragging it and go, I want from here to here. No, no, I I, will, I want to get it in here. And it's like, oh no, it's, it's going to look awful. So um, yeah, you want to plan this out. That means Fault lines, these lines, you don't ever build across here. Ah, funny, I just like this. Don't ever build across because you will just have, if you start building like this and they are not gonna be, it's, it's, I mean, no one, no one in their right mind could live with a design like this. This is just, it, this is just a no-go. So very easy, make a rule for yourself. If you want to retain some kind of structure, and of course, if you watch my channel, then you has, must have a uh, propensity for uh, building structures. Then uh, don't ever build across these. You build within, so that means there's some things you can use this area for and not. There's another few things. Uh, that means generally you build along the parallels. Parallels are the ones that go parallel to the equator. So you build along build belt lines along the parallels like this because then they will never cross a a fault line but if you build it north south then you will cross fault lines sooner or later and then it's just going to be bad even if you build belts on these it's still going to be bad because uh, even if this one looks good then as you start placing stuff along the edges then you can see even even if i do this there's still going to be like that that's that's not what i would call a straight line so yeah, always belts along the, the parallels, never along the meridians, north, south. Next thing, if you want to build on the path here, if you want to build something such as what I do here, 
what you will notice, and this is a very, very small thing, is that this exact tile actually belongs to the area that is closer to the equator. So keep that in mind if you want to build there. Uh, I would highly recommend not doing it. I wouldn't say that you should build like these lines. It looks good, but it also takes <clears throat> an inordinate amount of time to do that. So probably don't want to do that. Uh, so we've now understand how the fault line works and uh, the planetary sectors. So now we can sort of, when we look at a planet, we can sort of say like, okay, this area, am I going to use this for something? Or do I need like one, two, three of these areas maybe? And then you build it, you can see, okay, I've built something within these three areas. And then I'm... I can then go on to the next one and say, okay, if it takes three of those uh, sectors, then I can also use it for three sectors. I know that I can also build it up here because it's the same width. Let's uh, move on to a, another very big and important topic is how are you, what are you going to do? You find a planet, it's beautiful, it has the, the materials you want and you want to colonize it and start working on it. First, you want to just mine it, but then after that, you want to, to build, you want to start expanding with some industry on that then uh, how do you do you start it? Well, I have uh, my previous tutorial about the polar hub, the temple of effectiveness. This is what you have here. This is always built at the North Pole. And it basically takes all the area within the purple, purple line. And that means this area is sacrosanct. You can't build anything else in there. And this is now reserved for your hub. That means the closest you can start building is out here. So what I always do is I start sort of getting the framework of the planet. If you want mines, you're going to have power poles somewhere. And I know that some people pr like to just drag random power poles, uh, random wind turbines everywhere and just be like, yeah, it's fine. Some people like that. I don't. I like to build a structure. So what I do is I built the power poles and there is a very specific way to build the power poles so that you can easily spot where you are and you can get power everywhere. So we start with the wireless power tower. Now in the beginning, these two do take a bit of uh, idle power and maybe you'll find that to be excessive. Uh, whatever, if, don't do it if you don't like spending power on this. Uh, if, in the grand scheme of things, you will have so much power. As soon as you have this, any sort of uh, reason, as soon as you have deuterium or exchanges or even solar power, then it doesn't really matter. Right, so we built this and we have to enable this grid. So this is the, you place it on the three, unless it's with the power, with the hub. So this one here, on that one, you place it on the next one, and the next one that can reach. But the thing is, this one, if we look at this, if I take a power tower here, it will not be able to reach all the way. So it can't reach any further than this. So I actually should build it here, but then I have something in between. So then you, I use a small power pole, and I deliberately use the small power pole to test the tower, because I want to highlight for myself that if I fly around on the planet with which isn't as well divided as this one I don't know where I am necessarily and if I see a power pole and I go like ah that's the middle of the 10 wide so I know exactly where I am then we go to the next one now we have a big satellite substation that's what I use here of course you don't have it in the beginning so do something else build more of these power poles uh, you can also build like that can be here and then it has to be there there and there but you know as you move on a bit and you really want to use these satellite power stations then it works you have these they will now indicate your most valuable build area the one that is 16 wide and 16 wide so i think that it's worthwhile to use these even if it's just as indicators because again you now know exactly where you are if you see go somewhere and go like ah okay there's one here one here okay so that's the equator area this is the where i want to build and then so far you go all the way to the south and then you repeat the pattern the other way and it goes substation wireless power tower i hate that name <laughs> substation and then a small power pole and then here uh what is and then go up here to the middle and if uh, to the end here where it goes like five five three three and then you can skip this one so it goes two two and then put it here and then you're back on this location so now we know exactly how to do it. And once I've done that, I also make this indication of the meridians so that it's easier for me you know, wherever I am, I can just look in either side and find one of these and just know where my planetary sectors are. The way that you define, you set these up because it can be a bit difficult. There are two easy ways to find it. One is if you go in here, big square, big square, big square, big square. There are five big squares at this point. That means the lines here, they're the meridians. 
The other option is to take the last of your wireless power tower. If you use this pattern, the one that is here between the five square one and the 10 square. The five square one and the 10 square one. Yes, between those, then you set it here. Okay, thank you, how to save successful. And you build it three big squares on the inside. And the thing is, if I take this out and just try dragging it further, it it really, it's, it's the perfect distance. You can see right here, it will connect to both, but if I drag it more to one side or the other side, then it doesn't work. So this is actually pretty easy to build it at these locations because you can cannot really make a mistake. And once you've done that, then wherever you are on the planet, then if you just land here and go, oh, where's my nearest thing? Oh, oh, it's between that one and that one. Cool. So this is the area you have to build as a planetary sector. So that's uh, with the power poles here. Yeah, sure. It takes a bit of time. Basically what we've, uh, what I've seen now is that I could build my polar hub in seven and a half minutes. And I can then also build about these these ones in about eight minutes more. So that means when you land on a planet, you spend the first 15 to 20 minutes on just laying down the foundation. And from there on, everything gets so much easier. Totally worth it. So what do you build where on a planet in order to utilize the different size of the segments in the most optimal manner? Well, I am now here on one of my, uh, my planets, my existing planets. And what you can see here is I have my planetary hub coming in. And then I start using the areas around it. The areas around it can be used quite effectively for two things, ray receivers and ray guns. They have exactly the same size. So if we like, take them out, this is on a three tile wide. That is three tile wide. And this is on the five tile wide. So you can see already now it's getting kind of harder to see it, but you can see the lines there. I've also highlighted that. You can see my power poles here showing the meridians. And in here, I can now make, for example, in this particular case, I can make 10, uh, 10 plus 10. And on the outer lanes here, I can make 12 and a half plus 12 and a half, 12 and a half, because one of those are on the line. The other one is displaced from the line. So basically I can make, uh, what is that, 45 in a quadrant or 180 by using some of the least valuable building space and also they are because they are close to the close to the poles they will only be slightly below the horizon and that means especially with graviton lenses they will work 100 percent all the time forever and ever and ever and ever, and ever. So that is super, super valuable to have ray receivers and ray guns built at the poles because if you build them near the equator when they are 100 percent away from the sun of course, it depends on your planetary rotation, but most have sort of a, a slight uh, deviation. So if you uh, if you have a normal planet, then I would say this is a great thing to use here. And we can also look at the uh, South Pole. I have done the same. Let's, let's actually fly there. So this planet started out as just being a mining planet. As you can see, we just built mining facilities here and there. And we have now also like built a quite a few ray guns here just to make sure that we could build this magnificent sphere there right there it's actually inside the other sphere but that that is what it is so this area isn't particularly useful for big builds so i did it here and then the areas in the middle is where i get the resources i can see i didn't bother taking the copper though so we get the resources in the middle but we also have various builds so let's talk about the builds that i have for example the areas out here this is the 10 wide and you can see I use it for smaller builds. These are decent size, but they fit nicely in this area. So I can just easily plop down a few of these. If I want to build something like really big, then I need to get more space for it. And then it's better to use this tile within, you see this one. Now we know if we go here, we are now closer to the equator, I hope. Uh, let's see, all right, we see some towers in background. And you can see here that we have some good larger builds. This is a nice build, for example, using this space we have exactly available. What you can see here is that if I build it close enough on that side, then it will within the meridians right there. It'll fit. It is actually and this is something I've been practicing. If you build it ever so slightly, if you build it like one side closer, then you can actually also build the tower on the other side. Let's actually have a look at oops, this one. 
let's see yeah it is actually here no it's actually perfect this one because that means you can build your next here uh, okay maybe you could also build it like there and here and here and that means you have now used two sectors two planetary sectors here at the best location the ones closer to the, the equator and then uh, you have uh, yeah what is it 30 that's what that's uh, 120 240 480 smelters here 240 of them making steel so yeah that's that's gonna be a lot of steel or in this case I build it bigger because this is 45 long so this one is using like three sectors and then giving us a lot of other things also here exactly the same principle you use the space available for the stuff you have to build in large quantities and by making sure that you've already divided the planet you can see this one is highlighting the location and then you know exactly where to build your big builds yeah so as you can see well this is when you this is a bit of a late game thing so we have a we've quite big builds but it makes it a lot easier so that you know exactly where you want to build your big smelting areas your big industries those go closer to the equator where you have big tiles and the stuff that likes to be around the poles the polar hub for example your science facility uh, more power uh, power plants ray receivers ray guns put them up here you don't need to put the rocket launchers around the poles because they can be anywhere they'll launch now even if they're not facing the sun so they can be wherever you like I hope that this uh, this helps you with getting some kind of overview. I've also seen questions like, oh, how do you build round? You can only build round close to the poles. So you have to figure out if you want to build round circles, you build it around the one of the poles. But now we know. We know uh, the overall structure, how it is divided into different regions between the, with the fault lines, how not to cross the fault lines, how to find the meridians. These are are indicated by these how to find the meridians and how to uh, use the area between the meridians for dedicated very large builds such as big smelting areas or other big industry and figure out what to build at the close to the close to the equator what builds to do close to the power pole and uh, both close to the poles and what to build sort of in the middle i hope that really gave you some insights on how the geography or geology of Dyson Sphere program works and how to uh, again colonize and organize your base as you arrive at new planets. If you don't do this in the beginning, it gets really hard after a while if you start in making industry and then afterwards have to superimpose this. So my recommendation is do this for the next planet and let me know how it works in the comments. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, this little tutorial. Granted, this is something that maybe should have come out on day two of the of the release but at that point there was just not enough experience to really find out good ways and if i'd done it at that point there would be some really uh, weird uh, things here thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you have leave a like in below leave a comment if there's some things i missed or some other good ideas and uh, of course share it with other people so um, so they can also see this uh, this cool way of dividing your planet into sort of more logical planetary sectors and of course, if you want to support, there is a Patreon link. And but of course, no obligations. So thank you very much. Let me know what you want to see in future uh, installments of these tutorials. Until next time, take care and stay effective.